I'm Beverly Kirk here with Dr. Stephen Morrison, Senior Vice President and Director of the CSIS Global Health Policy Center, and we're talking about health diplomacy. It's one of the seven policy areas covered in a new report that you've just released on global health policy in the second Obama term. So health diplomacy covers a wide area, a lot of issues. Talk about why it's so important and which issues are getting the most attention. Because the U.S. government uh, over the last decade suddenly made this huge investment of mm -hmm. dollars in global health, it rose as a priority within U.S. foreign policy. When you're spending over, well over $45 billion on HIV AIDS mm -hmm. in a very short compressed period of time, suddenly it becomes a diplomatic issue and it becomes something that matters to the Secretary of State. And, and that in fact is what has happened. Mm -hmm. In this most recent period, Secretary Clinton became passionate and, 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 a, and a dominant force in driving forward our agenda and adding into it a number of new principles like putting a focus upon gender, mm -hmm. putting a focus upon integration of our efforts, uh, tying our bilateral commitments to our multilateral partners like the Global Fund, mm -hmm. uh, trying to overcome some of the interagency tensions and trying to keep an eye at how a very widening and quickly evolving global agenda that now brings in things like chronic diseases, mm -hmm. how to take account of those and begin to act. So it's not surprising when you look back that mm -hmm. it has become a diplomatic priority at the highest levels in the U.S. government uh, treating these issues around global health. And what's been the result of this increased attention? Well, I think the bar has, has been raised. Mm -hmm. I think that Secretary Clinton uh, uh, set a standard, a very high standard of engagement uh, by the Secretary of State focused upon global health, setting expectations, beginning to try and set the principles by which the U.S. government is going to uh, operate internally, and now uh, I think it, it remains to be seen how that handoff happens. Secretary Kerry, I think Secretary Kerry uh, comes into this job very conversant uh, uh, with the issues a long mm -hmm. history of engagement and commitment mm -hmm. on these matters. Uh, so I think you will see continuity. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to add, though, is there's a new twist, which is as Hillary Clinton was departing, she created a new office, the Office of Global Health Diplomacy, and appointed Eric Goosby, Dr. Goosby, mm -hmm. the head of the uh, Office of Global AIDS Coordination, uh, to head that office. So there is a, a new ambassadorial level office under the Secretary of State charged with carrying forward diplomacy. And that's, that's important, that's an important new development, that health issues have graduated into a mainstream foreign policy priority and that it is in that Secretary of State's domain to carry this forward in concert with our mm -hmm. other agencies. You, you mentioned the, the issue of change. How might, or what, do you anticipate being some of the different things coming in the second term? Well, first of all, uh, our resource levels are flat, if not declining, mm -hmm. so that that puts into focus the whole question of how do we engage diplomatically with our part key partner governments to, in to, to promote a transition mm -hmm. in which those countries assume much greater ownership for health and for their commitments. How do we do that? It's a tricky thing to do. Uh, how do we bring multi more multilateral partners into the picture, like WHO, like the Global Fund, mm -hmm. like the Gavi Alliance? It becomes very, very important that the front face of U.S. diplomacy, the chiefs of mission, our ambassadors in key countries like mm -hmm. South Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, Bangladesh, China, Indonesia, that our ambassadors be empowered to bring about a whole of government approach, be able to have budget flexibility, be empowered, be trained and rewarded for taking on global health issues and pushing the agenda of getting greater country ownership, greater commitment by those governments to push their own policies forward. The report outlines several priorities that you would like to see addressed. Can you talk about a couple of the key priorities for the next term? Well, I've talked about the need for transitions, transitions right. towards countries taking much greater ownership of their health sector. Mm -hmm. There's a need for a much closer alignment of our bilateral investments, our USG investments, with our multilateral programs. Uh, we're in a period of a scarcity and austerity mm -hmm. right now. 
there has to be higher efficiencies. There has to be higher levels of accountability uh, as, as we go forward. The American public demand that, as do, uh, as do our partner governments. And there's a widening agenda right mm -hmm. now. Uh, the chronic diseases, the non-communicable diseases, diabetes, cancer, uh, heart disorders, uh, are rising as a cause of, of mortality and early disability uh, in the developing world, in the, in the um, uh, emerging markets. Uh, this is happening at, at mm -hmm. a profound pace, and we haven't yet answered for ourselves, well, how do we fit that into mm -hmm. our diplomacy? Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is one of the key, uh, key challenges also that ha needs to be puzzled over. And how do we reach out and engage emerging powers like China that today are, they're really donors as much as, as, as recipients. Uh, they are, have huge cash reserves. They have huge expertise. They have huge internal demands in terms of their health burden and the like. Well, how do we relate to emerging powers that are not going to be in a donor uh, relationship with us, but they need, uh, I think, a partnership with us? All right. Dr. Stephen Morrison, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you.